Welcome back to Inside the Mind, the official podcast of Missouri S&T Athletics. It's been a long summer, uh, a much-needed summer, uh, lots of time off, uh, enjoying some some downtime in uh, what's normally a pretty busy uh, athletic season, pretty much for nine months straight, going going full tilt with uh, games beginning in August, running all the way through the end of May. But we are glad to be back here in the month of August as we are getting ready to start uh, preseason camps for several fall programs here at Missouri S&T. Going to start bringing in some head coaches and start getting some season previews here uh, as we get ready for episode one of season two of Inside the Mine. Uh, you might notice a little bit different look with some of our overlays for those of you watching. You might have heard a little bit of different intro music here uh, on this first episode of season two. But before we get too much further into today's show, we do want to take a moment to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Missouri s and Minor Corporate Club member Holiday Inn Express. We want to thank them for their membership in the Minor Corporate Club and support of s and Athletics. A few things that we want to uh, try and recap from the summer. Uh, plenty of news and notes out of Rala. But before we get into that, if you could please be a friend, tell a friend about the show as we continue to tell the stories and talk with Missouri s and student athletes, staff, administrators, and alumni. If any of you missed uh, anything from season one of the show, no worries. We got you covered. All previous episodes are archived online. Head on over to minorathletics.com. Check the Fan Zone tab. Look for the Inside the Mind podcasts. All 24 episodes from season one are available there, along with links to all the platforms where this show is available. Hard to believe this is going to be episode 25 of this neat little project we started way back last December. Uh, but thank you all for uh, taking a little bit of time out of your day to, to spend a little bit of it with us uh, every week. We appreciate it uh, and hope you enjoy listening along as much as we enjoy making these shows for you. Uh, not a ton of athletic news uh, as far as competitions go over the summer, but uh, definitely plenty of awards uh, and several headlines uh, to hit on. We're going to touch on everything, uh, otherwise we'd be here for an entire show talking about all of it in detail. But we'll start with a few uh, few big things, starting with a pair of uh, academic All-Americans in Nathan Swadley and Andy Huffman, as announced earlier this summer by COSIDA, along with uh, Nick Yonke from the track and field program. So three more academic All-Americans. It's 114 all-time for Missouri. Missouri s and one of the highest marks in NCAA Division II. Uh, a couple personnel changes. Men's basketball uh, head coach Bill Walker announced the addition of longtime Kansas City High School and College coach Randy Ferris to the staff ahead of this season as a volunteer assistant. While track and field head coach Sean Meineke added former Southwest Baptist standout Trenton Finley to his coaching staff ahead of the 2022-23 season a couple weeks ago. First-year head football coach Andy Ball added a few new faces to his staff over the summer, including Desmond Nord, Max Oser, and Owen Jordan, while uh, returning staff member Jake Giannone was elevated to a full-time position. He'll be working with the linebackers and special teams this year. Corey Sutoff also elevated to defensive coordinator ahead of this upcoming 2022 season. Kathy Monroe, former softball coach here at Missouri S&T, stepped down in June to take the same position at Quincy University. We would be remiss if we didn't take a moment to thank Kathy for all her contributions to the softball program here at S&T uh, and to the athletic department overall during her time in Rolla. Six seasons, correct? Yep, six seasons here in Rolla. Uh, a couple trips to the GLVC tournament. Uh, we definitely want to wish her all the best moving ahead in her career uh, in Quincy, and we look forward to seeing her again on the Diamond in 2023. Plenty of awards and accolades handed out to various programs over the summer as well. Uh, men's soccer, baseball, volleyball, uh, both the cross-country and track and field programs being recognized for academic excellence by their respective coaches' organizations, uh, while the Missouri S&T Marketing Department was named a recipient of the Grand Gold Award by the Council for the Advancement and Support of Education for last season's athletics promotional photos. You may have seen those as the uh, icons on everybody's social media profiles this year, those awesome photos with the uh, the, the silhouetted uh, student-athletes up against a pickaxe with, the, with some smoke in front of those. Uh, Michael Pierce, Jake Otto did a great job with those last year. Definitely want to give them uh, their due. Uh, actually just finished the uh, putting the finishing touches on the set for this year's shoot. We'll be uh, releasing those in the upcoming weeks. Have uh, Hopefully the, uh, those go over just as well. Uh, set a high bar in year one with those, those promotional photos, uh, but great to see those recognized uh, as well uh, over the course of the summer by CASE. 
Uh, finally, the 2022 Minor Athletics Hall of Fame class was announced as five individuals in two teams will be enshrined this fall. Donnie Brown from men's basketball, Cole Drusa from football, Pat McNamee from soccer, along with former coach Mary Tapmeyer and Christy Williams of women's basketball comprise the group of individuals with a 1974-1975 men's basketball and 2010 men's soccer teams rounding out this year's Hall of Fame class. For more information about all the news in Missouri S&T Athletics this summer, head over to MinorAthletics.com. You can find links to all those headlines and more. Get caught up on anything you may have missed. Also, be sure to hit, hit that follow button on social media. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Instagram as well. We're going to step aside, take a short break, be back on the other side with head volleyball coach Andy Hallis here on this episode of Inside the Mind, again sponsored by Holiday Inn Express. to this episode of Inside the Mind, presented by minor corporate club member Holiday and Express. Again, want to thank them for their membership in the Missouri S&T Corporate Club and their support of minor athletics. Joining us now on the show, second time guest entering his fifth season at the head of the women's volleyball program and his first leading the newly minted men's volleyball program, 69 wins to his head coaching total, Andy Hallis. Andy, thanks for stopping by. Uh, hope you had a good summer. How you been? Yeah, uh, it's good. Summer went by extremely fast this year, uh, as you know, we, we thought it would. Ryan and I uh, have been hard at work for really both of our teams. Our, our goal is to have everything finished that we can have finished. Uh, that way, when our teams are here, we're, we're just working with the teams and doing the part that we actually enjoy, you know, instead of hotels and itineraries and all that. Uh, but summer was good. Um, just finished with a little family vacation and ready for the players. It's one of the best parts of, of of the summer is being able to take the take that vacation time, be able to spend it with uh, with your family and everything else. Just because during the course of the year, you know, we all we all just get so so overwhelmed and so busy with you know, with games, with practices, with everything else. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Plenty of look forward, plenty to look forward to as we get ready to embark on another season of volleyball. But a little bit different this year. Two programs uh, starting this fall instead of one. Uh, one obviously competing in the fall. The other one uh, getting going in January. Uh, tell us, is there a different feeling, kind of a, maybe just a different level of excitement, different feeling overall for you personally heading into the season? Not really. I mean, uh, my two favorite times of the year are Christmas and preseason. Um, and so I, I still get those preseason, you know, uh, you know, smiles going. It's, it's all volleyball all the time. The players aren't worried about school yet. Um, you know, and, and our only job is to play and get better at volleyball. Uh, and so it's nice to have that with the women's team. Uh, the men will get a very quick taste of that in January when they come back. Um, but, no, I think in general my, my thoughts for the women's team are uh, pretty similar to where they've always been. For the, uh, for the year as a whole, uh, again, I think Ryan and I have prepared as much as we can uh, for both teams, and it's – it's a little bit of an either or, you know, I kind of have men's mode and women's mode and click back and forth between the two, um, you know, for just the different things that we anticipate to happen this year. Uh, before we get into talking about uh, the women's season come up in the fall, I want to talk about uh, assistant coach Ryan Thompson real quick. Just what kind of an asset has he been? And obviously, you know, he showed up a couple, you know, we finally got him got him in place uh, and ended up joining you guys on the road uh, in Indianapolis, I believe, second week of the season, yeah. third week of the season last year. Just what kind of an asset has he been this year, uh, obviously helping out with the women's program, but also helping, you know, get the men's program off the ground and really helping be able to uh, be just an, an extra person to go out and recruit and kind of help with the day-to-day -day operations and logistics of two college volleyball programs. Yeah, so I think last fall – uh, it was just, Ryan, we're, we're moving this train, hop on board and, you know, do what you can. Um, you know, obviously gave him some responsibilities and, and he did a great job, but it was just, we're moving too quickly um, to really slow things down and, and explain some things. Uh, and so learning on the fly and he did a great job there. Uh, once season finally ended, just the ability to take a breath and, and start planning and prepping and, 
uh, the first thing there was was for our men's team. You know, we had to get a men's team. Uh, and so with Ryan's previous experience, it worked out perfectly where he headed up that charge with our men's recruiting, um, you know, and and did an exceptional job. I'm, I'm super excited about uh, our first men's class and, you know, where we're at there. And we just got our first 2023 signee from the men's uh, side yesterday. And so, um, you know, we're moving along really, really nicely there. And then on the women's side, um, as we finally kind of divvied up some positions, Ryan took the lead with our setters and right sides in the in the spring and, um, you know, kind of gave him ownership over that. And uh, what, really what we were trying to do just there is create some better feedback loops. Uh, we got into uh, a pretty easy style over the COVID year and me doing some things by myself where, hey, you know, our players were phenomenal, but we can be better as coaches with better feedback loops, more feedback, more often, more specific feedback. Um, and so that kind of got us through the spring and then we get through spring and here we are uh, in the summer and Ryan and I have been able to, uh, again, take a deep breath, collaborate, look ahead. Hey, how do we want to divvy up some things even further moving forward? But he's been been huge, um, you know, for both programs. And as our players start to trickle in, swinging by the office, uh, you know, they're, they're swinging by both of our offices, which is really nice. Just, um, you know, he's he's a part of us now, you know, full full blown. And that's just um, showing up in the middle of the week and going, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, that that indie tournament was fun. Just, you know, he's he's getting passionate and uh, it's, hey, man, we, we do some things a little bit different here and there. And uh, again, just the learning on the fly. But, you know, he's got a taste of the GLBC, um, you know, from the women's side of things uh, and from the men's side of things. Again, he's been uh, more seamless on the men's recruiting probably than I have, um, you know, and, and now we're just trying to check those boxes to to coach up our guys for, you know, what college volleyball looks like. Right on. Uh, mentioning the GLBC, we'll go ahead and talk about uh, the women's season coming up in the fall first. A little bit different look to the league this year. Uh, no more Southern Indiana, no more Lindenwood. They both made that transition to Division One beginning this year, joining the Ohio Valley Conference. How will their departures affect the makeup of the league, in your opinion? I know we talk every, you know, every week, it seems like, just the amount of parity in this league and how that has continued to improve over the years. Um, with those two leaving and – uh, how do you think that shapes up what the GLBC is going to look like for this upcoming season? Yeah, I mean, uh, two, two very good programs um, with very good coaches. It doesn't change a whole lot, though. Um, you know, now I don't have to worry about finishing 15th. That's, that's really what it comes down to is, um, you know, less teams. But I think the parity is, is probably at its highest height since I've been here. Um, you know, and then on top of that, the the GLBC with their departure uh, switched to a single round robin this year, which that creates some um, some differences for sure. It's are we playing these guys at home or on the road? Um, because home court advantage over the last few seasons has turned out to be a pretty big deal. Uh, and then your tiebreakers look a little bit different now. Um, you know, and I, I really feel like you know there could be a, a four-way tie for fourth and now okay one of you know one of you guys is fourth and you're the uh you know the favorite at conference tournament and the other one hey you're going up against a team that's probably going to make the ncaa tournament uh with a big uphill battle um in that first round uh to extend your season as a probably a bubble team for the ncaa so uh, i think their departure just creates a little bit more emphasis on each game and what it's worth from a percentage standpoint. A win is a win, but uh, those percentage points for those final ranks will, uh, yeah, there'll be some hard separators when it comes down to it, uh, for sure. You mentioned, uh, you know, home games, road games, uh, once we do get into the conference league, just six home matches this year. Yeah. Uh, a lot going to be a, a road savvy road Warriors, team baby. One, one way or the <laughs> other. Uh, but with those six home matches, how much do you really have to take advantage of those opportunities, playing in your own on, in your own court, sl being able to sleep in your own bed, control those controllables that you necessar not necessarily wouldn't be able to on the road and being able to you know, take advantage of those games? Yeah, I think uh, it comes down to a couple 
big pieces uh, as far as the advantage of playing at home. I think our sight lines are great in our own gym. Uh, we're very comfortable in that space, obviously. Um, you know, our, our fan base is very good here. And so uh, as we continue to get better, our fans get better uh, and, and more abundant. And so, you know, they help give us that that extra boost if we're if we need it. Um, but yeah, I think just the daily routine and the freedom to take a nap and, you know, all those little things on Friday or Saturdays. Not having to worry about missing class. Yeah, you know, I think missed class here affects us probably uh, mentally a little bit more than some people. Our kids like going to class, you know, where other people, they think of it as a vacation. Um, you know, so all those things, I think, help a little bit. Uh, looking at who our six opponents are, um, you know, they're, they're teams that give us – well, everybody's good, you know, but we, we opened up with Quincy, uh, who ended our season last year. And so, you know, we know who they are, and uh, I think we're excited to, to come back with some new life there. Uh, the last time we played William Jewell and Rockers, we went five with both of them. Uh, and so uh, Rockers finished, you know, one spot ahead of us as the last team in the NCAAs. Um, William Jewell was playing some exceptional ball at the end of the year. Uh, then we get Maryville and, and McKendree. Uh, Maryville keeps getting better every year, and, and McKendree, that's been our dark horse. Um, you know, we just haven't got good results against them, even though we've finished higher than them. And this will be the first time we get to play them at home, which I'm excited about. Hopefully that will turn it in, in our favor. And then uh, Springfield, uh, which we had a five-setter with last year. And so uh, all those being, you know, close matches, close teams, uh, five-setters, it's all right. You know, playing at home hopefully will get us over the edge. That also means that we're going a, a lot of other dangerous places, and we've got to we've got to do well at those places. Rewind, rewinding really quickly uh, to before uh, conference play begins. It's a really tough non-conference slate this year. Uh, a couple of tournaments on tap uh, opening up uh, in St. Louis at an event hosted by Missouri St. Louis. You'll play them uh, first night of the year. Also going to see Southern Arkansas, St. Leo, and Emporia State that weekend. Uh, second week of the season, that first weekend of September, heading up to Hillsdale, and that's uh, if I if we had to say that those two out of those two weekends, that's probably the tougher of the two with uh, with yeah. Gannon, Colorado Mines, Hillsdale, and Ferris State. Um, you know, several NCAA tournament caliber programs on the docket early. You're going to get plenty of early tests to see what the makeup of this 2022 team is. What do you think are the opportunities that comes with a schedule like this? Yeah, you know, at the end of last year, talking with uh, Melissa Ringhausen, our athletic director, about, hey, you know, we were so close and what can we do? And it's we want to play more tougher teams more often. And uh, what does that look like? Um, and so that's where being able to go up to Hillsdale started to come to fruition. Uh, Ryan, the head coach at Umsel, a good buddy of mine, he's done a tremendous job there. Um, and so when he found that he was hosting, uh, it's not a home match for us but it's close enough. Uh, we have enough, you know, families up there that we will, you know, create a home environment up there um, in our own right. Uh, and they will also go up there for GLBC play. And so it gives us another opportunity to get our sight lines down and be comfortable in that gym uh, for hopefully uh, a win later on in the, the year as well. But uh, we open up with UMSL and again, NCAA team uh, second round, team from last year um and they graduate a couple nice pieces but they return uh multi-year all-american outside um and so yeah they'll be a tough go uh emporia um bing is a, a phenomenal coach and uh i know a couple of his new kids will say coming in transfers and his daughter's gonna play uh for him this year and um you know so i think they'll be much improved uh saint leo was a final four team pre-pandemic and natalia is a phenomenal coach for them uh sunshine state conference and another always, really good conference always a very yeah, very, very similar tough league glbc yes. you know top to bottom they're strong and then um uh southern arkansas they they have a new coach uh and i think anytime you get a new coach you get some new life you know breathe into that program so uh the GAC preseason poll just came out and they were towards the bottom but uh again that doesn't mean much to me it's you got to go out and you got to show up and then Hillsdale, uh, talking with Chris up there uh, for that tournament. I was, hey, I want to play you. You were the number one team in the region last year. 
let's do it. And, uh, and then he said they had Ferris, which was again, an NCAA team, um, a sweet 16 team. If I believe so, I believe they knocked out UMSL and, uh, and then he said Gannon and Colorado School of Mines, and Gannon beat Hillsdale to go to the final, uh, final four. Uh, Hillsdale was a lead eight, and uh, Colorado School of Mines, you know, they're well, we're we're the slum dog of it all. But Colorado School of Mines lost first round uh, in five, I believe, um, to a, a very good, uh, I think it was West Texas team, um, you know, and so. With, with those teams at those two tournaments, uh, we do have a one-off uh, later on with Illinois Springfield. But, uh, you know, those teams at that tournament, it's going to show us really early, you know, where we're exposed. And, uh, you know, our goal is to get better every day and be playing our best ball as the season goes on. Um, and so, yeah, we get those really good tests, uh, some good opportunities for some big matches early on. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them will have some numbers by their name to start the year. Uh, you know, and, and how does our team respond in those situations and, uh, talking through it with the team, I think that's where we're at as a program. It's, it's kind of put up our shut up time. Uh, we've, we've played some lighter schedules and, and tried to move in some cupcakes, uh, in at least a couple of our preseason matches or tournaments. Uh, and this year it's all right. You know, if, if we really want to talk about NCAAs and we want to talk about earning numbers by our name. Uh, let's not shy away from it and and just live in that space constantly uh, instead of you know living there sometimes and hoping for some easy ways some other times if you want to be one of those NCAA teams you got to beat those NCAA teams so definitely some good early tests uh, especially against some some you know very talented in region uh, teams as well large group of returners back for you this year but you did lose a, a few a uh, few key pieces uh, from last season, and Peyton Ganaway and Kiernan O'Boyle. Who will you look to in the group that is back this year to help step up and play a more prominent role in the rotation? Yeah, um, I'll let you know in a in a couple weeks uh, as our practices get underway a little bit more. But I thought we had a really nice spring. Um, you know, our our right sides, uh, both Maddie Mason and Hannah Feltz, had a really really nice right. Uh, right side campaign in the in the spring um, and so I feel confident about our ability there are we using one of them are we using both of them I think you know that's what we're waiting to see here um, I think as some of these kids move into some upperclassmen positions uh, you know we'll expect a little bit more out of Jordan um, you know I think that that she's ready for a little bit more uh, from you know just a, a full year campaign um, you know, top to bottom and, and being a little bit more well-rounded. Um, Shelby Ply is a kid that, you know, she's been around this summer, Rolla kid. And so just her popping in, she is ready to go, I'd say, in every facet. Uh, and I think it'll be exciting because everybody already knows her name. And so uh, for her to be ready to go and put her best up against other people's best game plan uh, will be a lot of fun because uh, she's just grown leaps and bounds in her time here. Um, on the ball control side of things, uh, Lexi and Miko, I mean, we, we've got two liberos, one one jersey, uh, and, and those two just leading the way and uh, some of the leadership aspects that they've been able to, to step up with uh, over the last little bit. And then I think our setting position as a whole, uh, you know, Hannah Mergel's done a great job uh, over the last couple of years. Kat's been able to step in when we've needed her. Uh, and then we've got two freshmen that, that come in uh, that'll push those upperclassmen. Um, you know, they, they've got some some nice accolades following them into our program. Um, and then, you know, I'll say there's some dark horses. Uh, we've got a couple kids coming back from some injuries, and uh, they're just an unknown right now. Uh, I think if they're able to come back healthy um, and when they come back healthy, it's, it's a win, not if, uh, that gives us so many more pieces of a puzzle to have a lot of fun with. Um, I think we can play a couple different styles of ball this year, and which is going to be the best for us most of the time. And if we need to put in a little oop-de-oop, -oop, uh, what are we going to do on that? You just mentioned uh, your freshmen. Uh, got a trio of them coming in this year, uh, one of which kind of has a little bit of a last name to live up to in the person of Annie Aaron, younger sister of uh, women's basketball standout, 1,000-point scorer Janie Aaron. What excites you the most about this incoming freshman class this year? 
Yeah, I mean, with um, Annie, she's a kid whose family I've known for a while back in my teaching days. Got to coach her two older sisters in volleyball uh, at St. Francis Borgia. And, uh, you know, Annie grew up as a gym rat uh, with her dad being an AD and, and both of her sisters playing volleyball and basketball throughout and Janie playing here. Um, and so her, her volleyball IQ and just being a student in the game is – phenomenal you know she was a state champion as a libero uh, at the high school level uh, played on open teams uh, with her club as a libero and then able to do essentially all of that as a setter as well um, you know take set her team to some final fours um, all of that and so her volleyball IQ coming in as a freshman uh, is phenomenal uh you know probably one of the the best that we've had regardless of position uh over her time uh grace uh coming in out of springfield um you know she's a kid who committed to us i think when she was about 5 10 5 11 and she's 6 2 6 3 now and so uh that'll be fun to see you know what what she'll end up doing here uh for our program and you know elise is again i think a very well-rounded volleyball player uh, she's played beach volleyball at a high level on her club team. She's set and hit. And, you know, I, I think that's the next phase for our program. It's not just big athletes and strong athletes where we feel like we have to race to 25. But uh, I think we're bringing in players now that can extend rallies and rally with uh, some of these teams that play a much, much different style than what we've been playing over the last couple of years. Right. I uh, want to change gears real quick, uh, just briefly talk about men's volleyball on the show. Obviously, we've still got a few more months to go before first serve in January. I believe Loyola, Chicago? Loyola and Lewis going Week, to Chicago for, for our first, first uh, men's volleyball games. Uh, welcome to college volleyball on the men's <laughs> yeah. side, so to speak. So, But it's still plenty of time to figure things out in the fall. Uh, what is the level of excitement? Uh, now surrounding what is the 17th sport offered here at Missouri s and I'm sure this incoming class is is just it is chomping at the bit to get going. I'm sure you and Ryan are excited. I know from the administration, uh, you know, we're all excited to see, and, and I'm sure the fans are excited as well. Yeah, I mean, the guys are – they're texting me every single day about, hey, when are we starting? When's our first practice? Uh, you know, it's a little bit different for those non-fall sports because – they get here and it's it's slow. It's classes first, and and we aren't going to start the volleyball there till about week two of school. And so, you know, they'll they'll have some open gyms and and things like that. Um, but you know, Ryan and I are really excited just to start working with those guys. Uh, a good amount of them were able to come to our summer camp this year, and um, yeah, it was it was kind of fun watching a couple a uh, couple guys, um, you know, who were younger or maybe hadn't been exposed to high level volleyball. Uh, looking over a court and saying, oh, wow, that's – if I want to play men's college volleyball, I, I need to look a little bit more like that. Um, and so that was really, really neat. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's starting so, something from scratch, and I think that was huge for a lot of these guys from a buy-in aspect. And so what does that truly mean and how hard is it and, and what is that learning curve? Because uh, I think right now them, uh, each of those players – uh, they're great players. Okay. Well, now we got to become not just a good team. We need to come become a very good team uh, to survive in Midwest Division One men's volleyball. There's not a lot of bottom feeders, and uh, so what does it look like to extend some of these rallies that uh, maybe they didn't have to extend at the high school level, and not just extending them, but finding swings off of them. Um, but the guys are super jacked up. Ryan and I are super jacked up, uh, and then it's not just for our our team. Um, but for men's volleyball as a whole, men's volleyball is a super tight knit community. Uh, and so just being excited for the growth of men's volleyball, it's the fastest growing sport at the youth level for men, uh, for young boys, I should say. And then for our local community, you know, it's, it's not family reunion, barbecue ball. And, um, you know, Bill Walker might, might try and sneak a couple of my guys into his office when he sees uh you know yeah, six, 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 six seven, seven guys seven, walking, six, around. Eight walking around um yeah. but no i think it's it's going to be a lot of fun just to get up there get going with the guys in the gym and you know establish who we are from from the ground up uh real quick who are some names people are going to want to put a star next to when they see the men's team in action for the first time oh man that's I know. I'm, I'm, I'm putting, yeah, I'm, you're putting me on the spot <laughs> because, you know, we're all starting from, from scratch. But um, two of our Chicago guys we're, we're really excited about, Aaron and Nate, um, Nate Meyer and Aaron Salade. Uh, they, they come from a very good club. 
and uh, they're pretty polished already, big arms. Um, you know, Nate plays bigger than what he looks. Um, you know, and Aaron, he was one of those guys that was able to come to camp and uh, just every day of camp, I was like, I like you more and more and you've already committed to us. It was, it was awesome. Uh, I think Caleb um, coming out of Chicago as well. Uh, thanks, Ryan. You know, all these Chicago connections. Gee, it seems there's, there's you've got a pipeline established yeah, already Yeah, we, we do. <laughs> uh, a lot of those guys actually play for a club called Pipeline, so it works out pretty well. But, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Caleb, um, you know, he's new to the sport, uh, just finished his second year, and so I think his best ball's still coming, and it, it just keeps going through the middle. Uh, Grogan, Kraus out of St. Louis, uh, another big guy. Ryan Swords club team had a phenomenal national tournament, uh, probably the best out of any of, of the guys that we're bringing in. Uh, and they'll battle there, and uh, it just keeps going. We're really excited about both of our setters. They're they're very similar, and they're going to, um, you know, battle together really to see who's going to win that job. And so many of the jobs are just so open, uh, you know, that I, I could – go down you know through every guy every guy that we're bringing in we feel like has a shot to to see the court um so yeah uh we'll see we'll wrap up with something <laughs> a little probably a little bit easier and, and a little bit lighter uh with something fun here what was your favorite thing you did over the summer Man, uh, I should say go to Nashville with my wife, but I'm gonna say going fishing with my with my oldest son Nolan. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Oh, he says spending spending time with family over the summer is always you know something to look forward to, and just being able to kind of you know hit that pause button and take a step back from everything, and you know really just appreciate everything from kind of a ten thousand foot view. But uh, Andy, thanks for stopping by. I know uh, you know preseason's right around the corner. Uh, by the time this episode comes out, you'll be well into the throes of uh, the preseason, getting ready for uh, that first match uh, against Missouri-St. Louis. But thanks for taking time. It's always good to chat with you and uh, appreciate it. Absolutely, Murph. Thank you. That's head volleyball coach Andy Hallis joining us here on this episode of Inside the Mind. That'll help us get wrapped up. Only again, let you know this episode presented by Holiday Inn Express. I want to thank them for their membership in the Minor Corporate Club and their support of S&T Athletics. Thank you all for taking a little bit of your uh, time to spend part of your day with us. We appreciate your support. Without you, we wouldn't be able to continue doing this show. Don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you may follow along. If you've missed any previous episodes, be sure to head to the Fan Zone tab of MinorAthletics.com. Look for the Inside the Mind podcast. All pre- Previous episodes are archived there, along with links to all the platforms where this show is available. Thank you all again for taking time to listen. We appreciate your support as always, and until next time, cheers and go Miners.